Hello! Hello, everybody! All, all you YouTube people and uh, Twitch livestream people, because I'm talking to all of you at the same time. It's kind of fun. I like this. I've, I've, we're doing live streaming and recording for the series at the same time. Okay, here we go. Let's get into it. Um, uh, this is actually take number two. I screwed something up the first time around, so all the live stream people get to hear me say it again. Won't that be fun? I've made a decision about this series. Uh, we're uh, just for the moment we are abandoning work on the Grunt series of vehicles because uh, I've put some thought into it, and that Grunt, the Grunt line of vehicles, it's going to be more trouble than it is worth. Yeah, it's some fun ideas, but it isn't really going to be worth it. And my overall goal with this series is I want to have um, less of the development and more of the actively flying around in outer space and I want to go explore some of these other planets and moons around the system and, and there's many things we have to get done before I can do that. So here it is an overall roadmap for this Kerbal Space Program series. First up, first uh, this is what we've been working on is the first thing I want to get done is have a simple orbiter, a space plane that'll take off a vertical launch. It'll get one Kerbal up into, uh, yeah, one Kerbal up into uh, orbit, get them f down to a safe re-entry, and we'll use that to, to shuttle Kerbals up and down from orbit. The next step, we're going to move to using this Mark III space plane hull, the stock Mark III space plane hull. Uh, except I have a mod that has the exact same shape as this uh, where I can turn this into a functioning cargo bay doors that open and close uh, Tuhu Torpedo I'm not certain how to pronounce his name my apologies for butchering the name yeah he's made a great series of mods from using the Mark III hold we're going to use that we're going to do something very like the real-life space shuttle and we're going to use that in order to get a whole bunch of probes uh, out and you know send some unmanned probes out into the into the larger or uh, Kerbal systems and go and start exploring around. Next step, I've got this rescaled Mark III hull. Just Mark III, which is not quite twice as big, but it's a little bit bigger. This is actually big enough that we can fit the 2.5 meter parts inside of it. We're going to use these. Uh, we're going to build a shuttle using these. And we're going to start doing uh, like space station components and landers and just the general larger stuff. So we can start doing manned missions to various fun places. After that, again, Tuhu Torpedo, this Mark IV space plane hull. Uh, I think we need to come up with a variant. I'm certain that we can to, to, to use this as, as a, you know, have a doors as a, a sp uh, space shuttle cargo doors on this thing you can you can fit like the the full three meter size parts with what the 3.5 meter parts that some of these other mods are using the, with the home mod the one that's got all the uh for all the various colonies yeah for for you know to set up set up moon bases and planetary bases anyway we're gonna make a shuttle out of this thing so that is the general roadmap and right now we're working on this one, the smallest one. Uh, in keeping with this general theme of, uh, let me see here, various stuff loaded in here. I'm going to be doing less of the active development and more of the flying. While I was not recording, I got some of the basic stuff working here. Okay, innovation, here's a Sparrow, the Mark D. We're gonna try this one out. Um, I've done some tweaking and things I think it is not I've not yet orbited this one but I think it can do it uh, the Sparrow Mark D we're gonna we're abandoning the grunt series of vehicle we're taking our main lifting engine and attaching it to the orbiter itself just like the space shuttle but most of our initial liftoff most of our initial launch comes from large strong solid rocket boosters the, where these came from I went to the Kyle and Winston pick and um, I just and they have a, a variety of uh, stronger than usual SRBs and I actually doubled the size in all of them and we're still getting the the actual part stats of like how much fuel and how much thrust we get out of them that's a work in progress for the ISP 
for the specific impulse. I just went and checked something on, uh, yeah, here we go, ISP. I just I checked on Wikipedia for the the real life space shuttle, and I just, what what kind of specific impulse we get out of there? That 242 at sea level 268. That's what I got off of Wikipedia for the real life things. It's like okay, it's good enough for them. It's good enough for my SRBs. Uh, and, you know, did some very rough and ready math to figure out how much fuel and try to uh, adjust the thrust so that uh, you can get about, you know, at, at least a two minute burn out of these things. The other innovation that's happening here, uh, this is I've actually taken uh, some stuff out of the Nova Punch pack and resized it. Uh, the Nova Punch is... Uh, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe it's not actually in the Nova Punch Pack, but it is Tiberdyne. Tiberdyne's his space shuttle system, where he had this uh, this nice orange texture for his fuel tanks, and it was well-modeled. You know, it's got the nose cone, it's got the end cap, and it, hey, it looks like a space shuttle's external fuel tank. Uh, I took that, and I'm using his models, and I've changed the size on a lot of them, so I've got... Uh, you know, I've got a whole variety of these things, from the 1.75 all the way up to 6.25 meters in diameter so we've got lots and lots all, all the red ones those are uh for rcs in case i need like a whole lot of rcs yeah done lots of stuff in the background it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a good time see in in using this uh, the the main lifting engine here it runs off the external fuel tank and i know because i've created you see just take a look at the label resources shuttle liquid fuel shuttle oxidizer because i have something different in there that means that the orbital engines on this will not run off of this tank and i no longer have to mess around with uh, uh you know shutting these things on and off right with the whole right click menu it'll it'll just work it'll work i'll just launch it just like usual Pretty cool, if you ask me. Let's try this thing out. Check this out. Here, let's point that thing up like that. And go like this. Shift tab. Symmetry mode enabled. Taking off from a launch pad. Another very, very intelligent modder. Dead beef. He's done these, uh, these building uh, the vehicle editor tools. Uh, you definitely have to check out that group of mods. I can go from directly from the directly from the space plane hangar to the launch pad hey and and now hey check this out our 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 custom named kerbals are back so whatever glitch was preventing the, them from showing up that glitch is now over everine oh you can hear him this is i got this this mod the chatterer because sometimes it's like too quiet and i don't want to go through the hassle of adding adding custom music so we we get to hear him talking to mission control and stuff <laughs> okay everine here we have like a little mini space shuttle. Everine is going into orbit with this thing. Okay, precision control is on. SAS is on. Let's take a look at the engine down there. We're going to have to gimbal that thing pretty far out. You see that weirdness kind of... Well, it's hard to see it in there, isn't it? Yeah, right about there. Okay, Everine, let's go. Thrusting, throttling up. And I like how it just destroys the gantries upon launch. That's that's a good effect. It looks kind of like the space shuttle. How about that, huh? All right, let's do a roll. Of course, no roll. Now we're all off flying sideways. Put it over here. Try and get it centered. Yeah, the in the previous video, people uh, saw that the the wings exploding off the grunt vehicle. I've and eventually I figured out that the landing gear for for some reason, if you install those those pre-retracted landing gear uh, on directly onto the wings, then when you reload the scene, you come back to them, the vehicle explodes. If you put the landing gear on a on a fuselage piece like that, everything's fine. So. Yeah, that was that was a couple hours of really not very interesting troubleshooting. There's no 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 reason to have recorded any of that, but I'll let you know that that was the issue. <laughs> Everine Kermin, 
Everine, that sounds like a girl's name, so I'll say she. Everine Kerman is not enjoying the launch. I, even though it is going fairly smoothly, you know. Everine Kerman is, is not is not a good flyer. She's not natural at it. Okay, SRBs are just about done. There goes the SRBs. Whoa, let's... Okay. There we go. There we go. Let's try and catch it and stabilize this thing. Yeah, see, we've I'm got to manually change the engine gimbal. Look at that big angle. Now yeah, we're way behind on our gravity turn. That may have been a little bit too drastic. <laughs> In kind of a crazy launch, you know? But it's working. Okay, perhaps it's up there 28. Yeah, let's try and point this thing a little bit closer to horizontal. Anyway, people people ask how, how to do the Space Shuttle style external fuel tank. This is it. You have to get that slow powered hinge, uh, stick your engine onto that thing, and assi uh, assign a couple keys to manually changing the angle of the engine gimbal. That's how it works. Okay, well, it's actually being kind of uneventful and boring, which is actually, that's kind of what you want on a launch. You'd just be really honest. <laughs> Usually the exciting launches aren't, aren't the, the good ones for your space program. You don't want an exciting launch. <laughs> And having to just make small changes to the angle of the engine gimbal as as the it burns off fuel from the external fuel tank the center of the center of gravity see the center of gravity was here it's moving closer now the center of gravity is actually in the, the orbiter vehicle itself okay apoaps is getting up there to 60 that's that's like almost it might as well be vacuum you know okay stop throttle down all right let's decouple this thing boom Oh, that's one problem. Look at that. It's going... I decouple and it gets right in front of my orbiter's face. That's probably not so good. Do it. Let's just kind of move sideways a little bit. Let's roll this thing right side up while we're at it. Maybe that'll make Everine spell feel a little bit better. Okay. All right. Yeah. And now, yeah, we've got just these tiny, you know, the stock little radial engines, those little guys. That's what I'm using as my OMS, Orbital Maneuvering System, just like the real space shuttle had, like, small, uh, little low-thrust engines that it, that it used once it actually gets into orbit. This thing will no longer push. So we've got, you know, just one small fuel tank inside of there. Yeah, okay, there's half of our orbital fuel gone. Periapsis is rising, that's good. Point this down here like this. Okay, my apoapsis is up there at 100. Yeah, it's almost in orbit. Very, very close to it. Okay, let's pull this thing out. See all the clutter from previous, <laughs> previous efforts. And there's the arc. Yeah, there's my external fuel tank. It's going to go for a splat. Looks like it's going to go splash down in this bay over there. So that's good. Uh, we'll do some time... Oh, hang on. First off, let's kill that. Let's turn that off. Do some time compression. Get around to that apoapsis. Kind of center it right about there. That's good. Raise the periapsis up. Let's just go for a circularization burn here. That one's 98.6, that one's 101. Okay, not perfectly circular, but in in order, uh, yeah, for our purposes, it, it doesn't need to be any more circular than that. Cool, Everine, you, you went to space. Here, let's turn the lights on. Blinky, blinky. Yeah. Uh, let's also, let's open these up, put those in an action group, and recharge our batteries. Oh, I put the wrong... 
Oh, I didn't realize I've got mismatched solar panels. I thought it put the same type on both the upper. Well, that looks kind of weird. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. Make up your own joke. What? Uh, those look like could be kind of rude. Kind of looks like it's it's flipping flipping off the world right there. That was that was. I thought I was putting both both of the solar panels just like this one. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. 